Well, hey, everybody, Scott Kelby here from Kelby One, the most awesome place to learn Lightroom online. And last week, uh, I had people asking me how I did the post-processing on my shots from shooting the Atlanta Falcons' new stadium. So I thought I would go into it for you here in Lightroom. We're going to start off with the three bracketed images. So I set my camera to take bracketed photos. So here was the normal photo right here. And then it took two bracketed images. It also took a shot that was two stops darker, and it took a shot that was two stops brighter. And so I'm going to show you how I did it from start to scratch. <laughs> from start to scratch. <clears throat> from start to finish. From scratch. There we go. And we're going to start off with the darkest image and the brightest image. You only need two in Lightroom. You don't need five or seven or anything like that. So we're going to take the two stops under, two stops over. I'm going to right click and go choose Photo Merge and HDR. And in a few seconds, you're going to get this window you see here, which is the HDR Merge Preview window. And then it's going to show you here's what the HDR would look like. All right. And it looks, you know, OK. So what it did do, as you'll see, is it brought in the detail from the city back there. It brought in the sky here that was, you know, missing in the original shot. And it doesn't look awesome yet, I know. So let's just, at this point, we don't do anything. We just click merge. So give it a second here and it will create a new HDR image. I mean, excuse me, a new raw image. It does create a new file and that file is a DNG as you can see here and it is raw. Now I do want to show you something before we go any further. Here is the normal exposure and you can see there's no detail in the sky and there's also not any real detail in the ceiling either it's but it's that's what your camera would capture without using hdr and then here now don't judge it this is not done but here it's combined that look you have all the detail up in here that you were missing you can see the sky and some other things but there are problems remember this is just step one step two let's go to the develop module now there's a couple of things that i do here that kind of help get rid of what i call the hdr look the first one is to increase the contrast this really kind of it the hdr images always look kind of flat so the first thing i do is increase the contrast and that right there just helps make it look more like a regular photo you still have nice detail up here but not quite as much and sometimes the other part is to just pull back the shadows a little bit so it just doesn't look too over the top Next, um, I'm going to increase the clarity. So I do add a little bit of clarity. It brings out the texture and things. And that's pretty much it, except for the next step. But that's really what I did here as far as you can see. I, I left it on the auto checkbox. So these, these settings were there because I had auto tone checked in the HDR box. Then all I, what did I do here? I increased the contrast a little bit. I... Uh, increased the shadows a little bit and added some clarity. That's pretty much really all I need to do. Here's what I do. Most of the work is actually done in the adjustment brush. So I'm going to click over there. We're going to double click on the word effect to reset all the sliders to zero. And then I do want to bring out some detail up in here. So I'm just going to increase the exposure a little bit and I'm going to paint just a little bit over here. Now lead is too bright if you ask me anyway. And then, but what's okay. We can, we're going to adjust that in just a moment. Yeah, that's way too bright. Let's bring that down. Now you can see we added just a tiny bit, what, 0 0.39, 0 0.29, somewhere in there. This area right here doesn't look super awesome. This looks better. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna raise this up a little. Then I'm gonna hold the Option key on Mac or the Alt key on Windows and say, this part here doesn't look very good brighter. So I'm just gonna kinda leave that darker. Now. What else needs brightening or darkening? And that's what I'm looking at now. Well, I think the field is actually a little too bright. You know, it's got an open ceiling here. So that's a little too bright. Let's hit new. That leaves my other, you know, adjustments in place. And then I can double click effect and let's darken the exposure on the field a little bit. I think it'll look better a little darker. The colors will become more saturated. All right, that doesn't look bad. Let's make the brush a little smaller and see if I can get up these areas right here a little better. Ah, it really didn't do anything, did it? Okay. Oh, no, there it goes. All right. Going to miss some of those edges. Okay, so the field looks a little bit better. I might have gone a little too dark. That's almost a full stop. Let's back it off a little bit. And then let's hit new so I can work on the stands a little bit. So the stands might be just a tad bright. That's too dark, but we'll fix that. What I'm basically trying to do now is just balance all the tones, make sure that there aren't super bright areas and super dark areas. 
and so that's way way too dark so let's just pull it back a little and just get that a little more balanced all right that's like 0.3 now i'm going to hit new and let's make it brighter again and i'm going to brighten this top deck up here why wow, i can't even see that let's make it as a pretty dark deck <laughs> and then dark brighten that up a little bit and while I'm here, let's brighten these stands a little bit, just so they kind of match a little bit better with everything. Now, I went and darkened them down. Ooh, I don't want to darken that side. I'm going to hit undo. I do want to brighten these stands. That looks a little better. And, and by the way, there's no official way to do this. I'm just kind of looking at the thing and looking at the scene and seeing, well, what needs to be brighter? What needs to be darker? It is not an exact science. And it's just my opinion. As there's like, you know, I just look at this and go, well, that look, would look better, brighter. That's pretty much it. Now, the only thing that I could say I would like to see a little richer is maybe the sky and maybe the scene outside where you can see downtown. So let's go to new. And I'm going to try. Let's just see if pulling back the highlights will be enough. I'm going to make my brush smaller. I'm going to go in here and let's just see. Will that be enough? Well, that's better. It's not super awesome. I'm painting over the skyline through the glass over there what if i were to increase the contrast maybe and lower the exposure a little bit yeah you can see a little better it's not super awesome and same thing for the sky now the sky looks pretty pretty much better with the nice blue in it and if you look over there at the sliders that's adding contrast lowering the highlights and lowering the exposure by about a half a stop I can see one more. Now that we're working on the ceiling, I can see one more problem. I'm going to zoom in. Here we go. And you'll have to get up in here. For get up in there, I'll turn on auto mask so my brush doesn't paint over the metal areas there. And that way we can paint right up to the edge here. We can get rid of that. Get those clouds back in. And then over here, same thing. Let's... Now, do you, are you noticing, look at the very top of the screen, even though I'm painting down here. Are you seeing that massive uh, chromatic aberration, that purple line that you see up there? That's pretty bad. And there's a green line there, but the purple one is just really jumping out. We're going to have to, you know we're going to have to fix that, right? All right, let's go and get this here while we're here. It doesn't look too great. It's just a gray, you know, looking cloud, but anyway. But I think overall that looks that looks too dark. Now that it's all painted in, it looks kind of fakey. So let's lower the contrast a little bit. Let's bring up the highlights a little bit. There we go. That looks a little better. Okay. I just you don't want it to be like super obvious. Now we do we have to deal with that chromatic aberration. There's only two things we would do left. Let's go to lens corrections. Let's enable our profile correction. See how that looks. All right, that's not bad. And let's go over to manual. And then this is where we, what we want to fix is that. Let's let it draw. That purple line up there, that's ghastly. Go over here to defringe, right over here, to get rid of that purple line. Just bring this up. Bring up the amount. Oop, it's gone. Now you see the green there. Bring up the amount here. That's pretty much gone. But you know what? I can still see a little there. That means your hue isn't right. Like the color isn't quite right. So if you drag it, you'll find this. Whoop, right there. There's the sweet spot where it just goes away. And let's back off. Oh, that's all you have to do to fix that. It's pretty easy stuff. Just the last thing that I would do is usually I'll add a tiny bit of darkening to the edges. I'm going to go to effects. And all the way around, I'm going to just darken the edges evenly to a minus 11. Boom. There we go. So let's look at the original image. No, I hit flag as pick. Let's not do that. There we go. That's what my camera took. And then here's what we got. I'm, I'm not happy with this area up here, to be honest with you. I'm almost rather the sky just go to white than that. It just, to me, it just it's drawing my eye and I don't want that. Let's go back here and let's find out which one of these is, is covering that. Is it yeah, it's that one. I'm just, I don't like that. I think I'm just going to hit delete, take that away, and I think that I like that actually a bit better. The only other thing I could do at the very end here is I think the whole thing could use just a tad more contrast. There we go. Let's do a side-by-side. -side. So you can kind of see where we started on the left, and that's what the single exposure from my camera would give me. 
and then we have the more detailed version on the right just pre pretty much using the basic panel and the adjustment brush and I could still do a little more work there, but at least that kind of gives you the basis of, of what I did. Hey guys, I hope you found that helpful, and I hope if you like stuff like this, you go over to kelbyone.com. Uh, we are an online training community uh, that with members helping members all over the world and the world's best instructors on Lightroom. Names you already know and trust. Um, of course, I'm teaching there, but there's you'll also find people there like Serge Ramali and Matt Kluskowski, and if it's somebody cool in the world of Lightroom, they probably already have classes there. We even have classes from uh, Adobe's own Lightroom product managers and Lightroom uh, mobile product managers. So if you're into Lightroom, we've got Lightroom covered, and plus you get Lightroom magazine, which is published 10 times a year, and a whole bunch of more things like the Lightroom help desk. And you can go and join for a year only $1.99, or you can join for $19.95 a month, and you will find more than 50 full-length in-depth classes. I hope you'll dig it. I hope you'll check it out. And thanks very much for letting me share this with you, and we'll catch you guys next time.